Hi there. Now, in this question, we're doing a hypothesis test. So, first of all, what I'd want to do is to define a random variable. And you can choose any letter you like, but I'm just going to choose x. And that ought to be defined. What I'm going to say is let x be the random variable number of emails that are received per 15 minutes. Remember, we're told that during a randomly selected period of 15 minutes of play, then were two emails that were received. Now, we know it's a Poisson distribution, so we've just put here where x is distributed as a Poisson distribution. Now, the mean over 15 minutes, we get two emails every five minutes, so 15 minutes obviously is a period three times that of five minutes so we would expect three times two six emails over that period what I'm going to do here though is not put that mean of six in there we're testing this mean so I'm just going to call it lambda so we need to set up our hypothesis clearly so we have the null hypothesis and for the null hypothesis we're going to say that the mean would be six emails are expected then over a 15 minute period but we've only got two emails okay two emails were received by the company so the alternative hypothesis would seem to suggest if we're expecting six and we only get two that the mean lambda must be less than six and this tells us that the test we'll be doing is a one-tailed test and it is in the lower end, okay, a lower tail test. And we've got to test apparently at the 10% level of significance. So I'm going to denote that significance level by alpha and it's going to be 0 0.10. Now we've got an observed value here of two emails. So the observed value, little x here, is going to be two. So when I'm doing questions like this, I always like to set up how I would reject the null hypothesis. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can either just work with probabilities or we could work with critical values. So I'll show you both in the same video here. You could reject the null hypothesis if, and we'll have two possible situations here. I'll do them in colour so you can see, you know, I keep them colour coded so you can see each calculation going with each situation. We'll take here the probability of our random variable x being less than or equal to 2. What are the chances of getting less than or equal to 2 emails given that the null hypothesis is true? That is, the mean is equal to 6. Okay, so. We'll just put that in. You could write that the null hypothesis is true there. It's up to you. And if the null hypothesis was not true, then we would expect this probability under this significance test to be less than or equal to 0 0.10. All right? Because we generally expect the number of emails to be somewhere around six but is this so low that the probability of it happening is less than or equal to 0 0.10 10 percent all right so that's one way that we're going to look at uh, this test the other way is working with critical values and by that we're looking to work out the probability that the number of emails received is less than or equal to some critical value given that the mean is six and for that critical value that probability of being less than it must be less than or equal to 0 0.10 10 percent so let's deal with the first one and for this one we're looking then to work out the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 given that the null hypothesis is true, that is the mean is equal to 6. And to work this out, 
what we can do is just turn to the cumulative Poisson distribution tables. Now, I've just drawn up an extract here where you'd look for the mean being 6 and you've got your observed values down here. And the probability of being less than or equal to 2 is 0 0.0620, which you should see, as I say, on your table. So do check that out. So that means that this is equal to 0 0.0620. And how does this compare to the 10%? Well, you can see that it's less than 10%, so less than 0 0.10. So it's in the critical region, so we would reject the null hypothesis if we did that. We need to write a summary, which I'll show you at the end, OK? But if you went for the other test here, OK, so we'll just put this in blue, then the probability of x being less than or equal to the critical value r, which we've yet to find, OK, given that the null hypothesis is true, that is lambda is equal to 6, the mean is 6, has got to be then less than or equal to 10%, 0.10. Now, if we were to look at our tables again here, then you can see that getting 2 is less than 10%, 0 0.0620. But if you get 3, the probability of being less than 3 is 15%, just over 0 0.1512. So clearly, the biggest value of R that satisfies this condition is 2. So from those tables there, R would equal 2. But our observed value of X is 2. So it's bang on that critical region, OK? So we'll put here, therefore, x, our value 2 here, is equal to r. And so that means that, again, we would reject the null hypothesis if we were doing this method of testing. So where does this take us to, then? Well, in summary, OK, what we've got, then, is that we would reject the null hypothesis, or we could say it's significant. And we need a conclusion, and that conclusion is there is evidence at the 10% level of significance that the mean rate, or you could say number or amount of emails received is lower, or it's decreased, or it's less, or there's fewer emails are received. Any one of those comments there would do. So. I hope that's given you some idea of the two methods that you could use for this. Don't forget, you can always check out further tutorials on this just by going on my website and looking under hypothesis testing. All right?